Hi and welcome again to the channel Newtown Naughty Boy and in this particular video we will be discussing the subject of chronographs for air rifles and air pistols and I will be looking at two particular um, chronographs that I own and a number of people I know own as well they are the Combro chronograph and the Crony chronograph these seem to be favorite with a lot of people and I intend to do at least a couple of videos here the first one is just an introduction to chronographs and what they should be used for and in a second video I will be looking more deeply into um, measurements that you might take using a chronograph and how these results of those might be useful to you okay so let's first of all let's discuss why you might actually um, own a chronograph if you own an air rifle or an air pistol um, for me there seems to be um, three uh, reasons for owning a chronograph three important reasons perhaps the first important reason and perhaps perhaps the most important reason is well within the UK at least and other countries we do have a restriction um, on the power of air rifles and air pistols in the UK um, and unless you actually own a firearm certificate then you need to ensure or maintain your air rifle and air pistol to within a certain power band so for air rifles it's 12 foot pounds and for air pistols it's six foot pounds um, and unless you actually own a chronograph you actually can't um, determine whether you're actually within the law or not so the second reason why you might own one of these is because a chronograph will indicate to you uh, whether you have a sick air rifle or sick air pistol it will enable you to understand whether the power has dropped or actually increased to what you expect so sometimes uh, a mechanical failure inside or something going uh, wrong elsewhere will lead to uh, your point of impact being somewhere um, different to what you expect and that may be uh, attributed to a change in power again you're not going to know um, what your gun's doing there unless you've got something to measure your air rifle or air pistol with so that's another good reason for having a chronograph so the third reason is well this is a little bit more complicated but for certain types of air rifle in particular those air rifles that are uh, use air supplies um, the PCPs as we call them in the UK um, and the ones that are non-regulated then it's quite important to understand where the sweet spot might be within your cylinder fill so for instance if you fill your air rifle to let's say something like 190 bar and you start shooting from that um, that pressure you don't know um, what type of um, uh, output you're getting from your air rifle as you start to use up the air supply from the cylinder it actually changes or can change as you start to shoot and we'll be looking at that in more depth during a part two and I'll show you how to do the measurements for that and how you might then want to plot a graph and see for yourself what we call the bell curve that may uh, transpire from doing this test a test over a series of shots and then ascertaining um, whether where your actual power band is and where the best pressure 
for your cylinder would be to uh, to shoot so we'll look in look at that in a part two okay so let's first have a look at the combro chronograph that I have here they are around about 50 pounds and probably the cheapest option for us in the UK to own um, they are very uh, um, they're very well made but you need to look after these you need to ensure that you operate these uh, in the right way or you can quite easily damage them um, they are a very simplistic piece of kit but they do measure feet per second for you and they do also measure for you a foot poundage so they give you for each shot that you uh, put through these um, they will give you both sets of measurement they also have a memory um, that you can um, access so after a number of shots you can find out which which is your lowest and which is your highest and your average so that's great for that um, they have batteries inside which you can change by taking um, the actual device apart if I flip this over to the back there are a couple of screws in the back here you have to actually take the back case off to change the batteries in here um, it's a little bit fiddly and I will warn you that if you do do that if you when you do change the batteries that sometimes there's something within here inside that tends to just drop out and sometimes um, it's difficult to understand where that bits come from so so go gently with this as you take it apart um, it, it's 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 okay as long as you concentrate on what you're doing and um, that's that's fine so the batteries last quite a time and, and the device actually switches off after a time if you've left it on so that's great so how this works is that you and I haven't got an, an air rifle out at the moment but the actual barrel um, of your gun uh, fits on this trough assembly here and then you use this wheel here to adjust this part of the chronograph the actual main part um, up and down so that the actual barrel aligns itself through this set these two sets here of sensors now the there is a huge aspect of safety here because the only way that you can actually do this is to actually look down your barrel and if I turn this now you'll see that I've got this now aligned correctly you can see down those two sensors there and you can see that my although this is just a, a silencer a moderator here it's actually pointing down down through the sensors but of course to do that on your rifle you really really do need to ensure that your gun is unloaded uh, not cocked um, and you need to uh, ensure that that's that's correct um, by going somewhere and actually uh, pressing the trigger into a safe area and maybe doing that a number of times just so that you know yourself that the gun is unloaded and you can then make this adjustment with the chronograph on the rifle now some people actually hand hold the device onto they they grip it like that as they fire through the chronograph that's kind of okay um, but a be better method I think is to either use uh, some rubber bands around here to actually clamp this on so that it's solid some very very strong rubber bands or another method that I use is to use one of these rings that um, that uh, fishermen use on their uh, rods I think these are used to clamp the actual um, reel to the rod itself uh, they're a little bit like um, a cable tie but they can be reused so you kind of um, slip this through and I'll show you in a minute how that works so I've slipped this band through both 
over both devices over, over the actual barrel and the chronograph itself and there's this nut this plastic nut here to tighten up um, so that's on their tire and um, these are usually sold in pairs but I think I only really you need one one of these to actually hold the the, th the device on onto the gun making sure that you don't have the end of your barrel too close to the first sensor here on the chronograph okay so with our uh, combro chronograph securely attached to our gun then we it's just a matter of switching the device on you'll see that there's kind of a square shape there um, that means that the uh, the actual device is ready for you to fire a shot through and um, I'll be showing you um, how to use this a little bit more or you'll see how this is used um, in the second part when we do some analysis of results um, so this is just showing you really um, how to attach and how to use your chronograph or this particular type of chronograph okay so now we come to the crony chronograph and um, it comes quite compact it's actually obviously a bigger device than the the last one we, we looked at um, it's a much larger device um, it opens up let's open it up okay like so so it's it kind of um, hinges on itself and opens up to twice the length so at this end here we have a display if I switch that on it's ready under this strong light to take a reading so with this particular device you mount this on a flat surface outside and there's a sensor here and a sensor here and your shot needs to um, pass over these two sensors here to get a reading now it's very obvious uh, that you need to take care when you do this to not shoot too close to the frame of this um, you need something of course uh, as with the other device that we looked at you need something at the back end to capture the pellet um, I think with the uh, the the last device um, it's a little bit easier because you can shoot into the ground but with this type you need to uh, have this sat on a table or something and what I do is uh, I put um, some sort of uh, pellet trap here um, and I, sh I shoot obviously in this direction across over the sensors and into a pellet trap um, and I will demonstrate this um, in part two to show you how this particular chronograph works so you might be asking yourself well why have two particular types of chronograph um, well the combro one that we looked at first that's ideal for rifles it's very easy to attach to the end of a silencer or to the end of a barrel and that works very very well but with air pistols it's a little bit different so um, it's usually or can be difficult to attach the combro to an air pistol so that's why I have two different um, chronographs and this this one suits itself to air pistols very well so that's the reason why I have two so it's important to stress that actually with both uh, chronographs the combro and the crony they both really need to be uh, used outside um, they need plenty of light and they need daylight light um, I know a number of people have tried indoors to use LED lighting with some success but um, predominantly what you want to use it outside um, to give you the best uh, uh, readings uh, possible. So um, with the crony 
um, there are some um, shades that come with the device so this is in two halves you clip them together like that and then um, if I show you I've got one fitted so it's quite tall this is the top of it here the shade is at the top and the shading is on these two metal bars here rising up it's actually um, uh, it's actually connected to two holes down the bottom here and if it's a very bright day usually you need the sunshade on as well to help you get the best readings so there's one set of those at each end so that's largely it from me on this particular video uh, it's just an introduction really to uh, chronographs um, how you might use them and why you might use them as I said earlier I'm going to uh, do a part two for you um, I'm going to take some measurements with uh, a couple of my guns one's a regulated gun and one's a non-regulated gun and we can have a look at the results of those two and compare and um, and just to show you or demonstrate to you how it's useful to understand the velocities out of your barrel for any particular fill of your tube on a PCP so that's to come so for now it's goodbye from me and uh, keep watching please like this video if you found it interesting and please subscribe if you want to hear more from me in the future bye for now well if you've ever wondered where the name Newtown Naughty Boy comes from well you can learn a little bit more about that um, I did write a book last year and uh, quite recently I've had the book republished um, it's got a nice new cover on it it details uh, my story really uh, growing up uh, in the UK in a small town and uh, all the things that I got up to uh, during the 50s, 60s and 70s. There's quite a bit in there, there's some pictures, there's illustrations, there's a little bit of naughtiness, there's quite a bit of air gun shooting and shenanigans. There's stuff that will make you laugh in this book. It's a book you can order from Amazon, but also it's available on Kindle quite cheaply. So why not give it a go? It's a really good read, and then you can give me some feedback on it. Um, hope you enjoy. Give it a try.